that's a good, must that's have been... such a good take on on what people don't check you know mm. how many times people have driven through the bush come back and they never go and look there's a little bit of foam here they never actually pull it back to look yeah. and and you see this and what it does for the engine overheating it's, it's sacrilege yeah. oh wow did you find the mouse <laughs> no, but there's a nest there. There's a mouse somewhere there. So here we see the natural habitat of the African monarch butterfly. I've seen them in the bush, most of them in better condition than this one. I must say the whole thing is pretty seamless. I actually took yesterday afternoon off because I was feeling unwell. I think something I ate. Um, and uh, I come back this morning and just so, so much as happened. I'm sorry I missed part of it actually. Uh, like for example replacing the uh, the timing belt and the water pump. When we start taking the radiator out we also find on the power sitting pipes the pressure pipe starts leaking. Um, you can basically buy the whole unit from Toyota but it is quite expensive. So but yeah we can take it to any hydraulic place and they make up two new presser pipes for us on the old steel pipes and yeah it's a fraction of the price so and I think uh, that's what's important for people to understand you know when you're looking at repairing a car there are ways when you can do as good a job repairing a hose like that and save a lot of money so that will definitely be done I mean this radiator we looked at besides the fact that there's a bird's nest on the other side yeah but the, the scary part is if you inspect a car with this radiator you look through the cowling into the fan and you feel it, it feels brand new. Because there's an aircon radiator on the other side, you will see this. It's also nice and clean. But if you start, if you turn it around, you get surprises. Yep. And you, you get real surprises when you take one of them out. And now you wonder why your car is overheating, because there's no airflow. Yeah. So on my drive down, I was getting cooling from about not less than well under 50 percent. When you start cleaning this out, nine out of ten times this core is weak from all the water and well, corrosion. Well, it, it traps the water here yeah. and then it rots the core away. Yeah, it's funny we didn't find a mouse now. No, I know, we're looking. <laughs> but I think, again, you know, taking a radiator like this, we would ins have it inspected by a radiator specialist. They can pressure test it, check all the cores are clear. And if it's still in really good condition and holds the pressure, which they did do a pressure test before we took it out, um, yeah, then you could still use this radiator. You know, there's nothing wrong it's, uh, as long as it stands the tests. What we have also seen, though, Terrain Tamer build a very nice radiator. It's fusion welded, so it's different process. Um, it's got a very nice functionality. They put a little uh, water sensor. Yeah. And normally what happens is when your car gauge overheats, by the time you see the gauge, it's too late. You pretty much damaged the engine. So if you've got a sensor that senses the water drops, it'll tell you much quicker than the gauge on your car will. So uh, here's the radiator from Terrain Tamer. So as you'll see, it's a different construction. You've got places where you can put this water sensor in. Um, it's a much stronger construction. So with a cooling system taking such a critical role in the vehicle's life, if this is something you can afford, you put it in or you repair your radiator, you make sure your radiator is in very good condition. And you don't just stop there, you look at the hoses, you look at the water pump, the thermostat, the radiator cap. And it's really important that you go through the entire system to make sure that the complete system holds uh, the integrity, the pressure and the strength. So no weaknesses in the system because one weak pipe, one pipe you missed, that's the pipe that will blow and you lose your water. So yesterday we spoke about the EGT pipe um, that was more made for the European weather but in our hot climate the EGT actually clogs the, the oil in the air up and becomes like tar. You can see on your camshaft cap 
That is literally a tar. And inside here, you can see it on your intake pipe and inside the intake. Inside the intake, yeah. So, yeah. so, so I have a question, would a catch can solve this problem? Yes, it will. And we blank the EGR pipe off, so the exhaust gas can't go into the engine. But yeah, EGT definitely will help for that, the, just uh, to take the fumes out of the, yeah, the, the air. Catch can. Catch can. Yeah. And then, based on mileage, we always look at certain criteria. Now, cam belt, the cam belt that runs from the top and ties the bottom of the engine together, it's critical. And if that cam belt has to snap, you say goodbye to your engine. So it's, it's a practice that when we take a car in and it's going to do long mileage, based on when the cam belt and water pump were changed, we will then change the water pump, change the cam belt, and make sure that those two items are absolutely in good condition. Because the last thing you want is for a water pump to fail, to start leaking, and although your car might not have done the mileage, it might have sat around for many years. And you're going to see on the water pump we took out of here that you get sediment collection in the actual water pump. And if we look at this water pump here, you can see you've got this calcification buildup, these little bits. Now this, this is often from um, lack of antifreeze in the engine. And the antifreeze does a number of roles. The antifreeze is there to cool the engine. It's there to um, lubricate the water pump. It's there to stop rust inhibitors. Um, you know, it stop reduce the overheating properties. So your antifreeze provides stop it from freezing. and stop it from freezing. Well, not here, but <laughs> in some places. Yeah, in some places. You're right. But what people don't do is change the antifreeze often enough. And so again, you pick up this type of calcification, and then these little bits come loose. Then they can go through the seal and then your water pump starts leaking and then you'll find that oh, well it's not leaking yet but it'll start it starts leaking and you get little cell telltale signs of the water leaking well here we've got power steering pipe we've had repaired as we said it's uh, gone to a hydraulic specialist they've probably made pipes that are going to last longer than these pipes uh, and they've done a really nice job so there's nothing wrong with repairing these sort of pipes and as you can see they, they, they're strong they're well done and they were lost so yeah they're gonna fit these back and then we're gonna fit the radiator pretty good and yours was probably fine. The slaves are, are pretty much always change because I found the slave cylinders do wear and if it goes you don't have a clutch. Yeah. And they're not an expensive item. So it's one of the kind of Achilles heels. Just put a new slave in. Keep the old one a spare if you want. But certainly we've done both. Um, but the master was still okay on this one. But you never know. 500,000 kilometers, the seals are tired. You know, the same in, in the brake master cylinder. We haven't stripped it and redone it, uh, it would be something if there was a sign of a problem that you go, you know what, let's just pull it apart and put new seals in. So that's that, we haven't changed that? We haven't changed the brake master. The master. All the rest of the brakes have been done. Yeah. Okay. You know, braided hoses, upgraded brake discs, okay. um, the brake boots. But you say the clutch master and slave have and been done. And slave have been done. Okay. But normally you could, you could easily take those units and instead of putting brand new units in, take it to a hydraulic space, they refurbish them, put new seals in, and you can fit a kit. Same as when you're traveling. If you were going to do, you know, extended, let's say, your trip, just carry the kits for the brake and master and slave, and even the calipers. They, they're small parts, they're rubber seals, they don't cost a lot. But if you had a problem, you could easily repair it. Unless, of course, in the master cylinder, it's pitted with rust. Yes. And that happens because people don't flush the brake fluid out. So every year, brake fluid renew, clutch fluid renew, and you shouldn't ever have problems with rust in the system. 
and that's just lack of maintenance. So what we fitted here is the uprated alternator. So this is a, a big improvement on the standard alternator. It takes it up to 120 amps and that's going to definitely help us with improving the battery ability for the alternator to deliver power charges into the batteries, the main battery and the auxiliary batteries. Again also this car's done, we don't know, but 500,000 kilometers on the old alternator. Being such a critical component to the vehicle electrics and of course your auxiliary electrics, it just makes good sense to change that. So again we're looking at critical components. The air conditioning system, we've removed the gas from it, we've taken the aircon condenser out, but when that gets cleaned and put back in, um, it'll all get checked, tested, vacuum pressure tested and then new, also new oil put in. Huh? They'll put new oil in, so it gets a complete service on the air conditioning system. We do change the idler pulley, which actually is the adjuster for the aircon. We change these so often. What ends up happening, it's got a very small bearing. People adjust a squeaking aircon belt by just making this tighter and tighter. And what that does, it puts a lot of pressure on a very small bearing till eventually this bearing will start to fail or fail completely. And if it's unchecked and untested, comes off and makes a huge mess in the fan and the front of the engine here, often damaging the radiator. So it's important that when you do fit belts, we only use a Toyota or a good quality belt that we're using on the aircon, and we will fit uh, a new one of these to make sure that the bearing is in good condition. When a belt squeaks, if it's a new belt, just a small adjustment so it doesn't squeak, but you don't want to over tighten these belts because all you do is put all the pressure on all those working bearings. And the same goes for the alternator. So rather change your belts more often because they do get hard, then take an old belt and over tighten it to get rid of the, uh, the squeaking. So there is the gearbox, all completed, very exciting, and of course the terrain chamber heavy duty clutch. I've decided not to go with the fortified clutch. The engine doesn't produce enough power for that clutch, in my opinion, to work well. It's perfect for very heavy duty use but that will be perfectly adequate for this application and this engine. Now the brake upgrade on this, as we mentioned before, we could have gotten away with what we had because it wasn't in bad condition, but in my Australia trip carrier, I have exactly the same brake upgrade and the double diaphragm booster and the brakes on that car are fantastic. They're really, really fantastic. So I thought, well, why not? Why, should, what, why shouldn't I do that? I want that performance. I am fitting the exact same spring configuration as I did in my latest Australian troop carrier. That's their smart spring. It's basically a progressive coil spring in the front and the parabolics with exactly the same rating at the back i think the weights of these two vehicles will be similar the major difference is that i have arb bp51 shock absorbers in my australian troop carrier but in this one i'm going to try the terrain tamer pro shocks this is going to be interesting to see because the bp51s are considerably more expensive than the terrain tamer pro shocks I can look forward to finding that out in my next big trip in Africa.